Hello and welcome to Nidhrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series which is designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and today we're going to learn how to play Praga Caput Regni or Capital of the Kingdom. The designer of the game is Vladimir Suhi and is the same designer as for the game Pulsar 2849 but also Underwater Cities. The game is published by Delicious Games and in Praga Caput Regni you will help build the medieval Prague, you will help build the Cathedral of the St. Vital, Hunger Wall, Charles Bridge and so on and so forth and similar to real life you don't want to focus on all the things at the same time, you want to focus on one thing and get it completed. At the same time you will find some synergies with other areas of the game but I'll let, discover, I'll let you discover those synergies but first let me teach you how to play the game so let's get started. First, assemble this action crane and these 3D models using the instructions in the box. When assembling the hunger wall and the cathedral, use these standard tiers and keep these alternative tiers in the box. When you get more familiar with the game, you can use these tiers instead of the standard ones, but always make sure these letters are all the same, so either all A letters or the B letters. Don't mix A with B letters and vice versa. Then align these arrow on the wheel with the number of players in the game. This would be the correct position for a two player game. Let's say we want to see the three player game. This would be the correct alignment. Then start placing these action tiles with the yellow side up and start placing them from the first space with the red background and continuing clockwise. For your first game, the designers recommend this particular order. In the later games, you can place them in a random order. You can even use the other side, the grey side of these action tiles, but then make sure all those action tiles are with this grey side up. Don't mix this yellow and grey together. Then place one turn counting cube in this space on the action crane and the second one on this track on the space with the corresponding number of players in the game. Assemble the Charles Bridge and since these bonus tiles are double sided you can place them on the bridge in any orientation, any combination and with any side up. Place the bridge on this space on the game board and again the orientation doesn't matter. Then spread these production tokens on the Vltava river and yet again the order doesn't matter. Shuffle these silver bridge tiles and place them on this space. And shuffle the gold tiles as well, but place only three of them to this space and the remaining three tiles are placed next to the cathedral. Then separate these hex tiles by their type, these are upgrades, walls and buildings. Then further separate them by era, first and second era and then by rarity, these are standard tiles, these are special tiles. Shuffle each stack separately and in the first half of the game you will only use the era 1 tiles and so draw the topmost special tiles from the upgrade wall and building stack and reveal them face up and place the first three tiles from each stack on their corresponding spaces. So you would take the first three upgrade tiles from the era 1 stack together with the wall tiles and the building tiles. Keep all the remaining tiles nearby. Sort these technology tiles by their number, shuffle each stack separately and place them somewhere next to the game board. Then assign these plaza tiles randomly to the plazas of the same color and with the random side up. There are only two spaces for grey tiles, only one space for a blue plaza tile and one for yellow tile. This specific plaza will only have a plaza tile in a four player game and this one only in a 3 and a 4 player game and since I'm demonstrating a 3 player game one of the plaza tiles should be placed here as well. Then in a 2 and a 3 player game this space already starts occupied with a random standard era 1 building so place the building from the top of the deck and place it face up and the same applies to this space if we would play a 2 player game. Then choose a color and take the player board of that color Place two cubes of your color on these special starting spaces on both production tracks, three cubes on these three spaces and two cubes to these starting spaces on these two tracks. 
Place all the pawns near the king's road. One cube of each player to this starting space of the cathedral and the hunger wall. Victory points markers to the zero space of the scoring track. And two cubes are spare cubes and these are available for you to place on buildings as you will see later in the video. And finally, each player will take one action board and make sure you have enough space around this board to place your additional hex tiles. The game is played over 16 rounds, starting with the randomly chosen first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction. These turn counting cubes help you count those turns and each turn has three steps. In the first step, you have to choose one of these six action tiles. Then, after taking the tile, you will perform only one of those two depicted actions, not both, only one of them, and you can choose which one. There are six possible actions in the game and they are all displayed on your action board. With these two actions, you can gain more resources, with these two actions you can build buildings or walls. Those are these two rows of hex tiles. Then this is the upgrade action, which lets you take one of the upgrade tiles and upgrade the corresponding action for the remainder of the game. And with this action you may help building this King's Road and at the end of the road you may help building the Charles Bridge. If you manage to gain these Windows tokens, and at least one of them is gold, as depicted on your action board, you can once per turn gain additional bonus action, and it could be any of those six actions. And since these gold windows are very rare, you will probably have this opportunity two or three times per game. Then at the end of your turn, you will take the action tile, rotate the wheel in this clockwise direction, until this first red spot is available and then place your action tile in this space. Then is the next player's turn. The game ends after each player has taken 16 turns. You can score victory points in many different ways. You can score points for building walls and buildings, for building the cathedral and the hunger wall, for building the bridge which awards you with these gold tiles with additional victory points, for these seals, if you reach them, and also for the final position of these two cubes on these two academic tracks. You will not be able to do everything in the game, you will have to choose your path and maximize its potential. On your turn, you have to choose one of those six action tiles. Each tile has two actions and you can only perform one of those actions. When you take an action tile from this red zone, for these two tiles you have to pay two gold, for these ones you have to pay one gold, and when you have to pay gold or stone, simply adjust the value on your gold crane or stone crane. When you take the tile from the green zone, there is no cost, and when you take a tile from the blue zone, you gain victory points. Mark those victory points immediately on the scoring track. Then, only after paying the cost, if needed, you can take the action tile and then you can take the bonus from the corresponding space and you can either take it immediately or any time later during the turn. So, for example, if you would take this action tile, you can turn one stone into an egg, but if you wouldn't have the stone at the moment, you can delay this bonus until you get some stone during your turn and then you can turn it into an egg. And since these bonuses are optional, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. So, after you pay the cost and take the tile, place it next to your player board and perform only one of those two depicted actions. I'm going to explain all those actions in the following chapter. There are six sections in the game and I'll start with explaining managing mines and quarries. Those are these two actions, managing quarries and managing mines, and I will explain them together because they work in the exact same way. Both actions give you two options, either gaining a resource and increasing the production, or simply gaining the resources. When you decide to take the resources, which is this symbol, you take all the resources from the corresponding track, gold in this case, which are to the left of the position of your marker. So not under the marker, but to the left of that marker. In this example, 
it's three gold. Move your gold crane to the corresponding position. If your marker would be in this position and he would also have this production token, you take everything to the left of that marker. So in this example, six gold, one, two, three crown symbols, those are three victory points, and the stone. Now, the first time you get the six gold, you take the cube, you take the bonus which is under that cube, in this case, it's one space on the technology track, and the unlocked cube can be used in other areas on the main board. Obviously, the same applies to the stone quarry. The first time you reach six stones, you take the cube, again, you move one space on the technology track, and once you take these bonuses, you may not take them again. Then, if any of those tracks reaches value nine, you take additional cube, and you also take the bonus which is shown underneath. You may not have more than nine resources. If you would gain more than nine, any excess is wasted. If you choose the second option, you gain one resource, in this case it would be one gold, and you increase the number of your gold mines by one. You increase your production. So move the marker one space to the right. When you reach this space with this icon, you can take one production token from the Voltava River. You may take any of those tokens if they're still available. Place the token in this space of the corresponding track, and now anytime you gain resources, you also gain the bonuses from that tile. Then, when you reach the last space on the track, you may claim the seal. Move your marker to the last position, and take one of your available cubes, and claim one of these seals by placing your cube next to that seal. That indicates that no one else can claim the same seal. If you would place it next to one of these three seals, you also have to pay the indicated cost, otherwise you may not place the cube there. That's why you don't have to claim the seal immediately. If you don't, the designers recommend to take the cube and place it on the seal on your player board, and any time later in the game, on your turn, when you have those resources available, you can pay the resources and claim that seal. All these five seals provide endgame scoring opportunities. With this upgrade action, you can upgrade one of those six actions on your action board. You can choose one of the four tiles in the display. These three leftmost tiles are always available. In order to take this special tile, you have to take the action tile with the upgrade action with the bonus showing this S as a special tile. So with this action tile with the upgrade action, I would not be able to take the special tile. When you do take that special tile, immediately replace it with another special tile from the same era. When you take the standard tile, replace it with the standard tile of the same era. So when you choose the tile, you take that tile and place it on the action space on your action board, which corresponds to the same action. In this case, it's upgrading the upgrade action. You can place it in any orientation you want, and I will talk about these bonuses in a moment. You can even upgrade your upgraded action. In that case, you place the tile on top of the previous upgrade, and only the topmost upgrade tile counts. Then every time you upgrade, as this symbol indicates, you move one space on this Charles University track. When you take the upgrade tile in the second era, you move two spaces on the Charles University track. Once per turn, and only once per turn, you may pay one resource, so either one gold or one stone, to replace any two tiles from any one row. Even the special tiles. So you can replace one special and one standard tile, or two standard tiles. Now, all these tiles are placed to the bottom of their corresponding stacks, and new tile is immediately placed face up. You're not restricted to replacing the tiles from the row, which corresponds to the action you have taken. You can replace the tiles even before you choose the action. For example, if you're looking for a specific upgrade tile, and you decide to replace two tiles from the upgrade row, but you don't find the tile you're looking for, you don't have to play the upgrade action, and you can choose a completely different action. 
Every time you take the action which is upgraded, you also take the bonus which is in the middle of that tile. The bonus can also be applied retroactively for the same turn. So if I would take the upgrade action and I would take this tile, anytime I do the upgrade action, I can change one gold for one silver window. Now, since I did the upgrade this turn, I can use this bonus immediately. And finally, these edge symbols provide additional bonuses when placing other adjacent tiles with the same edge symbols. I'm going to explain this in the next action, Construct a Wall. With this action, Construct a Wall, you can place a hex tile next to your action board. First, choose one of those four wall tiles using the same rules for choosing the hex tiles as for upgrades. However, this time you have to pay the cost indicated in this red zone. If you don't have those resources, you may not take the tile. Then only after paying those resources, you can take the tile. Then you immediately gain the benefit in this green space. In this case, it would be increasing the gold production by one. And then you have to place the tile adjacent to your action board. That means you are not allowed to place it like this or like this. It has to be adjacent to your action board. It doesn't have to be adjacent to other wall tiles you would already have placed. Now, when you place it so that these adjacency bonuses are matching, they are in the same position, you get both the bonuses. In this example, one silver window and one gold. When you place a tile in a such a way that this red symbol is adjacent to another one red symbol, you get one red bonus token immediately. And if you place a tile so that it is adjacent to two other red symbols, you would gain two red bonus tokens immediately. If the tile you place has this blue hunger wall symbol, you may move your marker one space sideways on the hunger wall. I'll talk about the hunger wall and the cathedral later in the video. Those red bonus tokens and potentially the blue bonus tokens provide additional victory points at the end of the game based on your position on this hunger wall and a cathedral. With this construct a building action, you can build a hex tile on one of these building sites. Again, you have to choose one of the four available hexes, then paying the cost in the red space, gaining the immediate benefit from the green space, and then you can take the tile and place it on any empty orange space. So not on these green spaces, not on plazas, not on these roads, not on the buildings and so on and so forth. Only the orange spaces, empty orange spaces. This area over here is the old town area and it's an expensive area, so in order to place a building in this space, you have to pay additional cost, but then you gain immediate benefits depicted in that spot. Now, each building will be always adjacent to one of the plazas, and when you build a building, it doesn't have to be adjacent to any other buildings. When you place the building with a corner bonus, and you place it adjacent to another corner bonus, you immediately take one blue bonus token and when you place it so that it's adjacent to two other blue bonuses, you immediately get two blue bonus tokens. If the building has this red cathedral icon, you may move one space sideways in the cathedral. When you place a building and the building has the space for your cube and you have at least one cube available, you may place it on the newly built building. It will be important for claiming the bonuses on plazas. If the newly built building doesn't have such space and it has this icon in the top left corner, you gain immediately number of points equal to the number of buildings around that plaza. In this example, it's three buildings, three victory points. When a building is placed on the last unoccupied space around one plaza, then the player with the most cubes on buildings around that plaza will claim both bonuses from the plaza tile. All other players with at least one cube on the building around that plaza will take one of those bonuses and they can choose which one they take. In case of a tie, 
The player who spent most resources on placing the buildings wins the tie. In this example, purple player spent three gold and one stone, that's four resources. Green player only spent three resources. That means purple player can take both bonuses, green player only one of them. If even those resources would be tied, both players would get both bonuses. Then after scoring the plaza bonuses, all players take their cubes back and place them next to their player board. When you take this construct the king's road action, I would highly recommend to have at least one egg in your personal supply, because you will move along this king's road and in each space you can convert one egg into a special bonus and in spaces 4 and 5 near the Charles Bridge you actually need the egg to perform the action. So when you take this action, move your pawn marker to the next space on the king's road. When it's off the board, move it to the first space. Then with the next action you would move it to the second space, then to the third space and so on and so forth. Each street space has two immediate effects and you can perform those effects in any order you want and they're both optional. When you have your pawn marker on this third space and you want to take this action and move to the fourth space, you must pay an egg to take that action. When you do, move your marker to this fourth space near the Charles Bridge, then draw the top three silver tiles face up, secretly look at them, choose one of those tiles and return the other two to the bottom of the silver tiles stack. Now place your chosen tile in any of these five spaces on the bridge. You will get the bonuses not only from the tile you place, but also from the spaces you cover up with that tile. If I would place it here, I would get three red bonus tokens and I can move one space on the Charles University track. Then when you take this action next time, you move to the fifth space, again you have to spend one egg, and then you can look at all three gold tiles, choose one of those tiles and return the other two face down on the designated space next to the Charles Bridge. Now take the chosen tile and again place it in any empty space on the bridge so we may not place it on a space with another tile. Then you take the bonuses from the spaces you cover up and place your pawn marker on this tile to indicate that only you will score additional victory points based on this condition at the end of the game. After that, you may no longer take this Construct the King's Road action. Once there are five planks on the Charles Bridge, the bridge is complete, and if any other player would get to the fourth space, they can still choose one of these silver tiles, they would get the bonuses, but they would discard the tile afterwards. If you get to the fifth space and there is a gold tile available, you can take that gold tile, place your pawn token on that tile and place the tile next to your player board. It will not be placed on the bridge, place it next to your player board and you will still score these bonus points at the end of the game. You may ask why do we have eggs as a resource in the game and why do we need to use eggs to move to the fourth and fifth space? According to the legend, eggs were the essential component of the mortar that was used to build the bridge. If that sounds like a strange decision, well, the Charles Bridge has been standing strong for over 600 years now. As this symbology indicates, once per turn you may pay two windows and one of those windows, or both of them, has to be a gold window, and then you can gain one additional bonus action. Discard the windows tokens and choose any of those six actions on your action board. You can choose any of those six actions, it doesn't have to be the second action from the action tile you have chosen for your first action. Actually, you can take the bonus action before your main action, before you choose the action tile. However, since you choose the action from your action board, you actually don't get any bonuses from the action crane when you take that bonus action. When you construct a wall tile and that tile has this blue hunger wall symbol, you may move your marker on the hunger wall one space sideways. Similarly, when you build a building tile with this cathedral icon, you may move your marker in the cathedral one space sideways. 
The position of your markers determine the number of victory points you score at the end of the game. Sideway moves grant victory points for your bonus tokens based on the column in which you end your game. The same applies for red bonus tokens and the cathedral and the position of your marker in the cathedral. Now, when you manage to move your markers upwards, you will score victory points based on the row where you have your marker at the end of the game. Again, it's the same principle for both buildings. Now, to move up in both buildings, you have to spend two silver windows. In addition, when you move from the first tier to the second tier, you have to pay one gold and one stone, and when you move from the second tier to the third tier, you have to pay one gold and two stones. The cost is the same for both buildings. If you don't have that gold and silver, you may not move up to the next tier, even if you do spend those silver windows. Now, when your marker ends the move in one of these bonus spaces, take that bonus immediately. In this case, it would be three victory points. If you move to the space with these arrows, you can immediately move one space in the direction of that arrow. If the arrow is pointing upwards, you don't have to spend those two silver windows, but if you move to the next tier, you have to spend those resources, otherwise you may not move there. When you reach the top tier in the cathedral, as this icon indicates, take one of these gold tiles and place it next to your player board. You will score additional victory points based on the conditions on the tile at the end of the game. Anytime you gain this technology symbol, you may move your marker on the technology track one space up. When you move onto a marked space, in this case level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4, take the top three tiles from the corresponding stack, choose one of those tiles and keep it next to your player board as permanent effects, and you can use those permanent effects starting with your next turn, and return the other two tiles to the bottom of the stack. These abilities are special abilities only you can use during the game. Level 1 and level 2 are permanent abilities. Level 3 and level 4 abilities are one-time abilities. You can keep them next to your player board face up. You don't have to use those abilities right away. You can use them anytime later during the game. And when you do, turn them face down to indicate that you may no longer use that ability. When you reach the level 4 of your technology, you can still move upwards when you gain the symbol, and even when you get to the topmost space, you can still gain more symbols, but you would not move your marker, instead you would gain two victory points immediately. Now, similarly, when you gain this Charles University symbol, move your marker one space up. However, there are no immediate benefits from this track. Except the case, you would be in the topmost space and you would still have to move up, again, you would gain two victory points instead. At the end of the game, as this symbology indicates, you would gain victory points by multiplying the position of your marker in this technology track by the number of victory points indicated by your marker in the Charles University track. In this example, it's two victory points multiplied by six, that would be 12 victory points. At the end of your turn, first discard down to two windows. Then take the action tile you have used during your turn, rotate this action crane in the clockwise direction one space and place your action tile in the first empty space in this red zone. If this first space in the red zone would be blocked, move that action crane one more space. Then place your action tile in that space. In a very, very rare case, if any action tile passes this blue zone, take this small 5 victory points token and place it on that action tile, and move that action tile to the first available space in this green zone. Then place the action tile you have used during your turn to the first available space in the red zone. Now, whoever takes this action tile will score 5 victory points immediately. When this cube on the wheel drops down to a hole in this position, you will see that you cannot move the wheel anymore. It's a reminder that you have to move this cube one space to the left. You move it towards this hourglass, which marks the end of the game. When this cube crosses these gray tiles, 
you have to change the tiles of the first era for the tiles of the second era. So discard all the era 1 tiles from the display and replace them with the normal standard tiles of the second era and also the corresponding special tiles of the second era. It always happens in the middle of the game, so in a 4 player game it happens when you cross this grey hex as is indicated with this symbol. In a 3 player game it happens when you cross this grey hex with 3 people indicated here. However, in a 2 player game when you get to this space with grey hex you don't change those tiles yet. As this yellow line indicates, this arrow has to align with the corresponding yellow line and only then you can change the era 1 tiles to the era 2. Then when this cube on the wheel drops to the hole again and you move this cube to the last space before the end of the game space, there are exactly 11 turns left in the game. You can use this table as a reference to find out how many turns each player has remaining. Then after making another round if the cube falls into the hole again you move this cube to this space and that's the immediate end of the game. Now in addition to the victory points you gain over the course of the game score all unresolved plazas where players have any buildings with their cubes. Don't score plazas that have been already resolved. Now for each plaza every player who has at least one building with their cube will gain the bottom benefit from that plaza tile. Regardless of the number of cubes each player has around that plaza, all players with a cube around the plaza only gain the bottom benefit. It's also shown on this player 8 card. Now in the second step multiply the position of your marker on this technology track with the victory points which are on the Charles University track. In this example it's 2 victory points multiplied by 6 12 victory points. Then score the victory points for Cathedral and the Hunger Wall and bonus tokens. Based on the position of these markers in both buildings players score the victory points from the corresponding row so in this case it's 13 victory points and here 4 victory points and then the column indicates the number of victory points for each bonus tokens of that color. Here the purple player would score 4 victory points for each blue bonus tokens. If they would have 3 that would be 12 victory points. However the green player here would only score 1 victory point for each red bonus token they would have. So if they would have 3 that would be 3 victory points. Each player counts these bonus tokens victory points from both buildings. Then count the victory points from number of wall tiles you have around your action board. In this case with 4 wall tiles that would be 10 victory points. Then add the victory points for any gold tiles you have next to your player board. And also from the Charles Bridge if you have your pawn token there. Add the victory points from the seals where you have your cube. And if you have any leftover eggs score the additional victory points from that as well. Then tally up your scores and whoever has the most points is the winner. And that's how you play Praga Kaput Regnim. If you have any questions or comments please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series please subscribe. You can even support the channel on Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.